This is McFly Angler. starts now. So I like to start by preparing the hook with some keel weight. For a hook I will be using these Gamagatsu SL12s in size 4. Place the hook securely in your vise. To ensure that the fly stays swimming upright, let's add some .015 size lead free wire wraps to help keel the hook. So I like to make about 7 or so wraps with the wire. And then press it together and push it down deep into the bend of the hook so all of it is below the shank line. Then turn the hook downward a bit in the vise to make the next steps easier. Now to secure and hide the wire, we will want to wrap some thread over it. I like this Vivas 140 power thread because it's a flat thread, and you will see how that will help in a minute. Start your thread at the bend of the hook and wrap up to the wire to keep it from pushing back. Then wrap over the wire with some light wraps until you reach behind the wire. Then you can snip off the waste thread. Now form a bit of a thread dam behind the wire, and then come back up over the wire again. Now to flatten the thread, spin the bobbin counterclockwise. This will uncord it. If you wrap down over the wire and back up a couple times with the flattened thread, it will cover it completely. Now make a 2-3 turn whip finish and cut off the waist. To ensure that this stays put, put a bit of super glue over the thread, and then put the hook aside for later use allowing the glue to dry. Now we will tie the tail and body of the fly. We will be using these micro spines in order to create the body. You will want a tail piece, two 6mm pieces, and two 8mm pieces. Okay, let's start with the tail shank. Place this securely in your vise like so. For thread, I will be switching to Viva 6 Ot in olive because it's finer and won't bulk up the body. Start the thread right at the eye of the shank, and then snip or snap off the waist. And then bring the thread down to the bend of the shank and then back up a wrap or two. For a tail, I really like Chickaboo. These patches from Whiting come in a wide variety of colors, much more than I even have here. And you can tie these with whatever tail color you want. I'm going to use an Olive Grizzly since I'm tying an all olive game changer. Select two feathers and align the tips. Then I find wetting the Chickaboo will help with the next step. Okay, so I like to measure out the tail to about two to three times the hook shank length, but you can make it longer or shorter if you like. Tying the tail at the measurement with a couple tight wraps back to the bend of the shank, ensuring that the feather stays on top of the shank. Then come back up a few wraps to lock it in tight, but leave yourself a little room behind the hook eye. Then cut off the waist feather and make a few wraps to clean it up behind the shank eye. This is optional, but I like adding a bit of flash to the tail, and here I'm using a midge pearl crystal flash. Grab two strands. Tie in the flash on the side of the tail with a couple wraps so it extends out to about as long as the feather tail. And then pull the forward facing flash rearward and tie it in on the other side as well. Then cut it to the same length as the other flash. Okay, now we will need some soft tackle. And these whiting red label hen saddles work perfectly and come in a wide variety of colors, way more than I have here. Again, I'm using an olive grizzly. Now these saddles have a range of feather sizes on them. Towards the top of the cape, the feathers are small and have short fibers. But towards the bottom of the saddle, the feathers are longer and have longer fibers. For the tail here, let's grab two of the smallest feathers that we can. And while we're at it, let's also pluck two slightly larger feathers for each section of the 6mm shanks, so a total of four. And then four feathers even larger for the 8mm shanks, and for the largest feathers as well for the head of the fly. You can see I've got four sets of feathers here. Two for the tail shank, four for the six millimeter shanks, four for the eight millimeter shanks, and four for the hook, which will be at the head of the fly. Okay, let's prepare the tail feathers for tie-in. Line the tips of the feathers, and then strip off the fibers from slightly above the fuzzy section. Now pinch the tips of the feathers and stroke some fibers down as well to get a nice spot to tie the feather in. Now this tip will be too long to tie in, so you will want to cut it off and leave just a small tie-in tag. 
Tie this in on the shank right in front of the tail and then advance your thread up to the eye of the hook. Now grab the stems with some hackle pliers and proceed to wrap the feathers around the shank with touching wraps. You will want to stroke the feathers rearward with every wrap. When you tie all the fibers in and reach the stem, then capture it with a couple wraps. Pull the stems rearward and tie back over them as well to really hold them down tight. Then you can simply snap them off while holding the thread tight if you want. Or you can just cut them, it's up to you. Now pull all the fibers rearward and wrap back up on top of them to angle them all back. Then whip finish the shank. Cut off the waist and then use some Solarez Ultra Thin to cement the head. Now this stuff is awesome. It cures really hard with the UV light and is thin enough to penetrate the thread wraps to help keep this held together through multiple fish strikes. Okay, pull the section off your vise and grab the 6mm shanks. Put one shank in the vise. Now look at the tail's tag end and make sure that it is angled down. And then put the tail in the shank like so. Now wrap over the shank to close it and wrap back up to the loop made by the shank. But bring your thread back a wrap or two. You will want to prepare the shank feathers in the same way as the tail. However, there is a trick to this. You can see that these feathers are roughly the same size. However, we want to create a taper on the fly. For the first section, grab the two smallest feathers and align the tips. When you strip off the fibers, do so further up into the feather, so you get smaller fibers. Then pinch the tip further up, so you still have enough fibers to cover the shank. Okay, so I'm going to show you the next set of feathers here as well, so you can see the difference. As you can see, I'm stripping the fibers off a little further down into the fuzzies slightly to get longer fibers. Then I'm pitching further down into the tip and getting the same amount of fibers on the stem, but ensuring that they're slightly longer. So I hope that makes sense. Anyway, go ahead and tie in the shorter fibered feathers here, and then wrap back up on the hook shank, stroking all the fibers rearward with each wrap. Capture it the same way as you did with the tail section. Snap or snip off the stems, whip finish, and cement with Solarez. Now do the same thing with the next section. So I kept this in here so you can see some issues that can arise with just snapping off the stems. I didn't wrap far enough into the stem and it came loose. Now I was lucky enough to save this, but usually if this happens I have to untie both feathers, grab two new feathers, and start new with this shank. So be careful if you snap them off as well. Now for the two 8mm sections. This will be done exactly the same way as the previous sections. Just when preparing the feathers, leave a little more stem so you can ensure that you can wrap the extra length. And you will get the hang of how much stem needs to be used for each feather as you continue to tie more of these. Alright, now that the tail and body is complete, you can see the taper formed here. Let's grab that hook that you prepared earlier. Use the same flat thread that you used on the hook earlier, and form a little bit of a thread base on the back end of the hook. End with your thread right in front of the hook bend. Now we need some wire, and I really like this Senyos Thin Intruder Wire. Make sure that you cut it with some wire cutters though, and a piece this long should tie about 5 or more of these flies. Okay, tie the wire in directly on top of the hook, ensuring that the tip doesn't extend past the hook eye. In fact, I only tie a small section in like this. Make four to five tight wraps up the wire, and then bring your thread back down. Now fold the wire backward and tie over it as well. Then tie a little into the bend of the hook, ensuring that the wire sticks out almost even with the center of the hook shank. And then bring your thread back up a wrap. Put the end of the wire through the eye of the tail section, and then pull the wire until the tail is close to the thread. Leave a small loop on the back and make sure it's not too large. Make three to four wraps with the thread to hold the wire into place. And then you can pull to adjust the loop size. Too large and this tail will foul on the hook, but too tight and you won't get as much movement. Once happy with the loop size, then tie back into the loop a bit to close it. And then wind up past the first section of wire and then back down to right in front of the bent section of wire. 
Then pull the forward facing wire rearward and tie that down as well. Now cut the wire off and clean up that whole section with some thread wraps covering the wire. Whip finish and then paint a bit of super glue on the thread wraps and set aside to dry. Now one thing I want to mention is I usually tie multiple of these flies in a row. So I will usually prepare five or more hooks and then five or more tails and then attach five or more tails to the hooks and then finish them. This allows the drying process here not to take too long, as once I get to the next step, the glue has already dried. Okay, let's use the thinner 6 aught thread now to finish up the fly. Start the thread and then bring it back to just in front of the wire loop. Prepare the feathers for tie-in in the same way that you did for the tail sections. But you will want to make sure and leave a fair amount of usable feathers on the stem so you can cover the entire hook. Tie it in, grab with hackle pliers, start wrapping up the hook shank, stroking the fibers rearward with each wrap, and you will get about halfway up the hook shank and then capture it in the same way. And I like to brush this section out with a stiff toothbrush before the next step. Then start the next section of feathers and wrap up to the hook eye. Capture that behind the hook eye, snip off the waist, and then whip finish your fly. However, do not cement the head just yet. To add eyes, we will need some gel super glue. I am using the earth colored living eyes in five millimeter size. Put two on your hand to get them ready. Put a drop of super glue on each side of the fly right behind the whip finish. Place each eye on so it's directly behind the hook eye. Then pull the fly off the vise and look at it directly in front to ensure that the eyes are positioned how you want them. Then press them on tight. Then wait a few minutes for those to dry, and then angle them up in your vise like so. Now we need some Solarez Thin Hard Formula. This will be put between the eyes to fill in the gap. Also, I didn't mention before, but this is a UV light that cures all the resin I've been using. Anyway, put a drop of resin between the eyes like so, and then cure it with your UV light. Now, I don't like the flat spot made here. I want a bit of a bump above the eyes to round it all out. So here I am adding a very small drop on top to shape it how I want. Now turn your fly downward and rotate the vise. Add a drop of resin on the underside of the eyes as well and cure them. Okay, here I'm adding just a bit more as well. To finalize everything, let's add some of this ultra thin resin around the eyes like so. This will not only make the fly look better, but it will completely encapsulate the eyes to ensure that they will stay on through multiple fish strikes. Oops, I got a bit in the eye of the hook. I usually don't, but it does happen sometimes, and if you do as well, you can just use a needle or bodkin to pick out the eyes. And there we have it, the finished mini feathered game changer. This fly has great movement, as you can see with this slow-mo footage in my hand. The joints on this really make the fly move wonderfully and give the tail very lifelike action. Now it does matter what the fly looks like underwater and not just wiggling in my hands. So here is some underwater footage of the fly. This is some very fast moving water. As you can see, the fly wants to sort of rotate a bit, but because of the keeling of the fly with some wire, it will not fully rotate around. The fly moves very nicely, just like a bait fish would look. Now the movement comes more than just from the joints in the tail. Each of the fibers of the soft tackle feather move as well, so it gives us multiple dimensions of movement. As you can see, when the water flow is stopped, the fibers will still move. When stripping this in still water, you get lots of tail wiggle as well. Now this is a small section of water, so it would look even better if I was stripping this from a fly rod, but to film that would be very difficult. So at least you get to see here a little representation of what it might look like to the fish while you're fishing with it. Let me know in the comments section what you think of this fly and what colors you would like to tie it in. As you all know, I have gotten you all discounts from both www.risenfly.com and www.dooliesflyfishing.com. Dooleys offers great prices on all of the name brand fly tying materials, 
and Risen Fly manufacturers own hooks, rods, reels, and other gear for fly fishing. Their products are top quality, and best of all, they are priced very reasonably. Not only are the prices at these two shops great, but like I said, they are offering all of my subscribers a discount. So use McFly at checkout when ordering from either of these shops, and you will get an additional 15% off of their already great prices. I want to also thank all of my Patreons who support me. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help support this channel, and also get some great perks like early access to my videos, participate in live streams, and more. So go to www.patreon.com forward slash angler to sign up today. I also thank all of you who share all my videos with your friends and your continued support by hitting the like buttons and subscribing. Thank you for making these videos possible. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.